receive of the Lord, that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and say it, picked, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup and when he had supped, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat the bread and drink this cup, ye show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat his bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And the word is already blessed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we lift this bread and this wine up to you, giving you thanks and giving you praise for what you did on Calvary's cross, oh God. Thank you for your life. Oh God, thank you for the death. But most of all, God, we thank you for rising on that third day. We thank you for getting up with all power in your hand, oh God. And that is why we're here today, God. We thank you today. For the life that you have given and continue to give to your people. Father, you said as often as we do this, we should do it in remembrance of you. We're here today, God, to say thank you one more time. Father, we pray now, God, that you bless every partaker of this bread and of this wine, God, that it would bring healing to that body. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Those of you that are viewing live stream, stay tuned because the best is yet to come. Amen. God is doing something in this hour, and he's doing something through Greater New Bible Way, and I thank God for the leader that we have here that hears God and obeys God and walk with God. Amen. That's in the person of Dennis J. Rogers Sr. He's my brother, my friend, and my pastor. Stay tuned to hear what God has to say to you. After the choir would have rendered this final selection, we want you to stand up on your feet and receive this man of God as he come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs>
know where I'm on my way to. Tell them it's Holy Ghost time. Can we talk about the Holy Ghost today? Since it is national and international, amen. Holy Ghost, amen. Pentecostal throughout the churches of God in Christ day to day. Amen. Let's go to the book of Acts. Amen. Let's go to the book of Acts. Amen. Good God Almighty. Amen. Acts the second chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I feel your presence right now in the room. Thank you, Jesus. Acts the second chapter. Acts the second chapter. Hallelujah. We're going to begin reading, amen, at verse number one. Hallelujah. Acts, amen, the second chapter, verse number one. Thank you, Jesus. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound, amen, from heaven as a resurrection mighty wind. And they filled the house where they were sitting. And there were appeared unto them cloven tongue like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And when they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Good God from heaven. Can we drop down to verse 14? But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them ye men of Judah and all ye that, amen, that are dwelling at Jerusalem be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing that it is but the third day of the day, third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken, good God Almighty, by the prophet Joel. Amen. And in that last and 17 said, And it shall come to pass that in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy good God Almighty and your young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams. Good God Almighty close your book up and look at your neighbor and say neighbor what we need
When we look around our world today, I know you all are looking, I know you all are watching. You all see it all the, amen, the things, amen, that the, the enemy is trying to do to distract us, to get our attention off of the main thing, to make us think that God is not real. I dare you to tell him he's alive today. Because my God rules and my God reigns. Not only does he rule eloquent, but he super rules. The word says so. The word says so. Hallelujah. But I think that there, amen, that if there ever was a time, amen, we need to recognize it, amen, and get it in our mind because the devil, amen, has tricked some folks, amen, and he's, amen, he's tried to, amen, to make some folks think, amen, that the Holy Ghost was for a group of people, amen, many years ago. I wish somebody said he's a lying wonder. That is, amen, amen, that is, amen, it was for those, amen, of the first century or the 20th century. But I want you to know this morning, amen, those of you that are here, amen, that it is still operating today. Amen, I believe, I believe, I believe, amen, we got a great number of people, amen, that are here today that can testify of receiving the baptism of the hope. Are there any witnesses in the house today? Thank you, Jesus. You know those old habits that Brother Dennis used to have? Amen, amen. I, I, I just don't have a mind to do those things anymore. So, so nobody can tell me that the Holy Ghost is not real. Mm. I know, amen, that the Holy Ghost is real for myself this morning. And God wants me to have the Holy Ghost. And I believe, I believe, I believe, amen, amen, that we got, amen, a lot of churches. We got a lot of churches today that are missing out on when they don't promote the Spirit of God, amen, and when they don't promote the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And listen, while I'm talking this morning, I want you to know who I'm talking to. So I want to recognize three groups of people that are in the house on today. Amen, for my millennials that are in the house today. Amen. Those of you that were born in 1980 yes, up until the present time. Yes, so that you know, can I get a, amen, give you a little education this morning. Yes, amen. Until my generation X. Yes. Those of you that were born in 65 to 1980. Yes, good God Almighty. And to my last group of people, you baby boomers out there. Yes, good God Almighty. All of you from 65 on back. I'm not going to ask you at your age this morning. Tell somebody the Holy Ghost is for you. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds kind of old and ancient to some folks. But young people, middle age and seniors need to know that God has more than salvation. Can I do a little teach preaching this morning? I want to do a little teach preaching this morning. Y'all trying to push me, amen, but I really didn't want to take my time. I don't know if I want to run or walk this morning, but I, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Just like Jeremiah said. But salvation, salvation, Salvation is where it starts out at. But after salvation, God wants to equip you to live saved. Tell somebody, you can live saved. Young people, y'all getting ready to go off to college, and I want to admonish you, you can live saved. 
in that dormitory. You can live safe on that campus. You just got to get with the right group. I'm talking to somebody this morning. You, you, you need to be equipped, amen, to live safe, amen, and that equipped comes from the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not a stranger. The Holy Ghost is not an object. The Holy Ghost is not an it. The Holy Ghost is a person. Tell somebody it's a person. We as Pentecostal believers, amen, has always believed, amen, in the Trinity. You know God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. We've always believed in one God, manifested in three ways. We don't believe, amen, in three gods. We believe in one God. Y'all talk back to me this morning. We believe, amen, and amen, that that is, amen, he is so great, amen, but he manifests himself, amen, in three ways. For your note takers this morning, for your note takers that have your pen and paper out, number one, he is God the Father. The creator of all the forms, amen. Creator of heaven and of the earth. Number two, he is God, the Son, who redeems, amen, the sinful man back to God. And then thirdly, he is, amen, God, the Holy Ghost. Good God, amen. That will live inside of you. Because Jesus could not stay here on earth forever. Hey man, God gave him a limited time to be here on the earth. He says, I'm going to put, amen, you in the earth. Amen, and you're going to be there for about 33 and a half years. But when you come back to me, we're going to put something in your place. This is the Father and the Son talking, y'all. We're going to put something in your place. You're coming back to me, to the Father. Amen. But the Holy Ghost, somebody shout Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to come from heaven down. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And now we don't have to pray, amen, and say, Lord, send the Holy Ghost down. For the Holy Ghost is already here. Amen. All you have to do now is be receptive of the Spirit, amen, and be open to the Spirit. That's why, amen, what we got going on here this morning, the atmosphere is very important. You can't have the Holy Ghost in a dry, dead atmosphere. You can't have the Holy Ghost in a poke your lip out atmosphere. You can't have the Holy Ghost come in the church and you got a grudge against your brother and your sister. You can't have the Holy Ghost and you're afraid to walk by me. Because you're going to have to speak to the pastor. You got to have this thing clean in your heart if you want the Holy Ghost to dwell there. Somebody say, Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, Holy Ghost. You can't have the Holy Ghost and you're sad. You're not glad about what the Lord is doing for your brother or for your sister. Amen. Just because Ella White, amen, got a brand new Lincoln Town car. Amen. Do you think I'm going to come, amen, and park, amen, in my parking space, amen, and be jealous of Ella White? No, if I got the Holy Ghost, I'm going to be just as happy for Ella White. If know that it was me, somebody shout Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost shows up when
when you're glad. Yeah. Good God am I. Hey. Amen. You see y'all sit down. Y'all pushing me this morning. You see. You see. Preach pastor. I've learned that everything is not for everybody. Can I make it plain this morning? And as believers, you can't fit in with every, amen, well, you don't belong. Mm. Got a whole lot of people now that are trying to fit in with every crowd. They can bother that they go and be in attendance with. And y'all know every crowd, amen, that we go, it ain't the spirit of the Lord thing. Well, I'm over here, so I'm going to do like they're doing over here. So what if I got to? And that ain't the kind of music that I'm used to. So you ain't going to see me shrug my shoulders. Y'all know what y'all be doing. Y'all going to be saying, so pass the door back. Y'all, that, that, that what you would call it, dancing, that ain't even me this morning. But I'm doing the Holy Ghost this morning. Got a whole lot of people, got a whole lot of people now that are trying to fit in, amen, the crowd. Crowd, amen, that you are not familiar with. Crowds, amen, that you are not supposed to be a part of. God has a plan for your life. And his plan must be fulfilled. Many people have lost out, amen, because they're trying to fit in places, amen, that they just don't belong. God has called you. God has chosen you. God has a plan for your life. Children of God this morning, Romans 8, 29 through 30. And I'm a prayer phrase. Amen. Whom he, amen, did for no, he also did, amen, predestinate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. And moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I in the book this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody has a calling upon their life. Whom he called, he justified. Whom he justified, what? He glorified. Ah, this is not Dennis Rogers' word. This is the word of God. God wants to be in you, children. Are you allowing your light to shine? The question is this morning, are you allowing the light of God to shine? No matter how good or bad the situation may seem, you got to let the light shine. <laughs> Scripture says, amen, that he's chosen us before the foundation of the world. You're sitting in here right now, amen, but God has chosen you to be here today. You're sitting here now, amen, waiting on the Spirit. But God has chosen you, amen, to be in this place at this time because he know, amen, that the Holy Ghost was going to show up, amen, and that the Holy Ghost was going to visit you. He predestinated you. He chose you before the foundation of the world, amen, and there are no accidents in God. Amen. It is no accident that you are saved. It is no accident, amen, that you are a preacher. It's no accident, amen, that you're on the mother's board. It's not an accident, amen, missionary heart that he called you to be where you are. It's not an accident that you're serving on the deacon board. Deacon Frello, it's not an accident that you are calling, amen, before your time to follow in your father's footsteps, to carry out the post on the usher department. I got to talk to you this morning. 
God has chosen this thing before the foundation of the world. Good God Almighty. And the devil can't stop you from being saved. He can hinder you, amen, but he can't stop you. The devil can't stop you from having the Holy Ghost. He can hinder you, amen, but he can't stop you. The Spirit of God has always been active. It has always been available for his people. I'm coming to a close, y'all, amen, but look at the scripture. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. In Genesis 1 and 2. Amen. And the earth was without form. And void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. But the Spirit of God moved. Somebody say move. When there was no movement prior to. When Samuel anointed Saul and Gideon. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Amen. And he prophesied. Amen. And the Bible said, amen, he was turned unto another man. Don't tell me what God can't do. I know some of y'all knew me before I took this mic. I knew some of y'all knew me, amen, back in the day. But tell somebody, look what the Lord has done. The Spirit of the Lord turned, amen, him into another man. Can't nothing else turn you into another man or another woman. You can read all the books you want to read, amen. Study all the programs you want to read, amen. Listen to all those ungodly counselors that you want to, amen. But tell somebody, can't nobody. I said, can't nobody. Do you like the Lord can? Good God about it. For some people, it took a little longer than us. Amen. To get here. Amen. When you get the Spirit, you got to know, amen, how to hold on to the Spirit. Just like when you get money, it's not how much you make that determines your wealth. Amen. It's how you manage what you get. Got to quit. Heaven, heaven, in Acts, in the Apostles, the Holy Ghost is a mighty power of God at work. The power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Spirit is strengthening, is a strengthening force in the book of Acts. And when you get the Holy Ghost, it is a life-changing encounter. For it was the Holy Ghost that authorized Jesus to preach the gospel. He wouldn't even preach until the Holy Ghost he heard from John the Baptist, his cousin, good God Almighty, had to baptize him. And when the, when the baptism of Jesus in the river of Jordan, and when Jesus came up out of the water, Somebody say the Holy Ghost. I dare you to say the Holy Ghost. Fell from heaven. As I'm a dove. Sitting on our Lord and Savior Jesus. Well, why do they describe it as a dove? I'm glad you asked me this morning. Because a dove, it represents purity. I said a dove, it represents gentleness. I said a dove. It represents meekness. The Holy Ghost landed on him. God spoke from heaven. Amen. This is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Good God Almighty. And John said, help me say John said, I don't have no need to baptize this man. Amen. For this man is greater than I am. Are y'all praying for me this morning? But he knows, amen, that he was getting ready, amen, to prepare the world for the Holy Ghost. Can we do a little shifting now? Amen. He brought, amen, his disciples on board. He picked them up one by one. 
He did men, amen, amen, that wasn't great in the community. He picked some men, amen, that didn't have a great portfolio. He picked some men, amen, that were tax collectors. He picked some men that were fishermen. Good God Almighty, amen. He just said two words. He said, follow me. Yeah, we sing the song. I've decided to follow Jesus. I've decided to make Jesus my choice. He started teaching them, amen, for a while, amen, and he told them, amen, I'm not going to be with you always in this physical realm, not as a man, amen, but I'm going away, amen, and when I go away, I'm going to send somebody in my place, and I'm going away, amen, and I'm going to send, amen, what they call, amen, a divine helper, amen, he's going to give us, amen, power from on high, good God Almighty, and so he said, the Holy Ghost is coming down, amen. And amen, and they tell them, amen, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go back. Tell somebody we need to go back. I want you to go back to Jerusalem. I want you to wait right there. I want you to tarry there until you receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen, he said, I'm going to give you something, amen, that you've never had before. Amen. And he just breathed on them. Amen. And they received the power. Amen. It was, amen, symbolic. Because when the breath, amen, of the Lord, amen, is breathed on you, good, my, good God Almighty, the breath, amen, on them, amen, that they could hear, the breath on them, amen, that they would turn. The breath on them, amen, so that they could be a force, amen, in the world. Tell somebody we need the breath of the Holy Ghost to breathe on us again. Tell somebody we need a move from the upper room. They moved to the upper room. Good God. Amen. Well, the 120 was there. Mary and the mother of Jesus was there. The disciples was there. Amen. And a whole lot of others was there. You ought to tell your name. Say, neighbor, what we need is a move of God. What we need is a Holy Ghost. Because when we get the Holy Ghost, good God Almighty, we can do things, amen, that we never could have imagined. When we get the Holy Ghost, we will have power like we never had before. When we get the Holy Ghost, we can take care of our loved one. Good God Almighty, the first lady was here with Teddy. When you have the Holy Ghost, it would equip you to take care of your loved ones, even though they're getting AIDS in the bodies. Bodies are coming with fever. Amen, and we have to do more things for them when our parents and loved ones get older. Even though we got things going on in our own life, when we have the Holy Ghost, it will equip you when you can take care of your business. You can take care of your business. And you can take care of When we have the Holy Ghost, it will give you power on your job. And while they're blowing smoke in your face, while they're cussing in your face, while they're saying all manner of things against you falsely, it will let you stand and then turn around and invite them to go to lunch with you. When we get the Holy Ghost, that old neighbor, good God Almighty, if my father was here to tell you, they're stirring a pot of no good stuff. And every time they have that no good stuff, they're dumping it over the fence into your yard. When we have the Holy Ghost, even though your neighbor is doing that to you, they get sick. You can go knock on their door and say, neighbor, do you need for me to cut your yard? When we get the Holy Ghost, even though we come in the church, all of us might not agree with one another. If somebody just happened to ignore you, you can 
call him up and say, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry. Please forgive me because I don't want nothing to come between me and the Lord. I want the Holy Ghost to walk with me. I want the Holy Ghost to talk with me. I want the Holy Ghost to keep me as I move, as I walk, as I talk. Somebody shout Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost to be our guide. We need the Holy Ghost to be our comforter. Can't nothing keep you like the Holy Ghost can. We'll find ourselves when the word of God is going forth. And when the preacher, the man or woman of God is speaking. And instead of saying they talking bad about me. You're going to say, okay, Lord, fix me. That's the, what saints do. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Clean me up. Wash me. Because I want to get it right. I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. A lot of us think that we got another 30 or 40 years on in this place. But listen, he's calling the millennials. He's calling Generation X and the born baby boomers. It's sad when we got to, amen, hear about another shooting, amen, in a school, 1920, amen, whatever the last count was. Shot down like animals. When are we going to stand, amen, and take back the prayer back in school? It's going to take the Holy Ghost. To my educators in this room, you may not be able to say it out loud, but you can stand at your desk. You can stand at the chalkboard and say, Father, help my classroom. For you supervisors that are in the house, you can say, Father, as I start this day off right, help me to help those that are under my leadership. The Holy Ghost will lead you. I'm not afraid to put some oil on my hands before I go to work. For everybody I touch, Everybody I shake hands with, everybody I come in contact with, good to see you, John. Good to see you, bro. And they don't know that they didn't have a touch. They didn't have a touch. They probably didn't go to church, but they have been touched by the man of God. They've been touched by the woman of God. Somebody shout Holy Ghost. Give me power. I want the power of the Lord man. that when I lay my hands on the sick, they'll be able to recover. Amen. When I lay my hands on the deaf and the dumb, they'll be able to hear and talk. I want the power of the Holy Ghost to move upon me so that when I touch the lame, they'll get up out of the wheelchair and they'll start not just walking, but they'll be able to run out of white. And they shall know that it was the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody, Lord, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. We're standing all over this building. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost, church. A lot of things that you're dealing with right now. A lot of things that you're going through right now. It won't bother you as it has been bothering you when you invite the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost talks to your mind. You all heard the saying that a, a, ter a mind is a terrible thing to waste. We got to make sure that we feed our mind 
the nutrients, amen, daily. These are the nutrients, amen, for just like you take your vitamins. My mother made sure that all of us had our vitamins right by our bowl of cereal, whatever. She was feeding us every morning. We could count on that Flintstone or that Yogi the Bear, whatever type of vitamin that it was to be right there by our food every morning. We need to pick this up just like that. This is very important for your livelihood, saints. I'm crying out to you this morning. Young people, if you're going to be successful, amen, what we have about four, five, six, amen, amen, one of the largest high school graduating class that we've ever had. Come on, thank God for them. But to our young people that's getting ready to go off to higher education, you're going to need, amen, to take one of these with you. Why you, amen, open up all those other books that are preparing you for the world. Don't forget to open up this book. Daily, it is very essential to you, to your spirit, man. If you're going to make it, amen, you're being weaned from mom and dad now. You're moving into, amen, adulthood. Amen. Preparing you to, amen, to face a mean and cruel world that have no sympathy for you. Only what they can get out of you. Only what you can produce. But this here will comfort you. This will hold you in the midnight hour. When you can't be near mom or dad, that will hug you and tell you that they love you. Lord, I found so much love in here and I found out, amen, that Jesus loved me even more than my mother that gave me birth. He loves me greater and I know she loved me. I know my mother and my father love me. But we're talking about one that loves us even greater than that. Oh, yes. Tell somebody one more time, we need the Holy Ghost. It is what's going to keep us. When we go through these trials and tribulations in this world, and I want to tell you, you're going to go through some just as sure as you live. You're going to have some highs. You're going to have some lows. You're going to have some nights. Amen. And some days, some very dark days. Oh, it's coming if you live. Yes, sir. Amen. As much as we hate to think about it, we're passing from this life to the other. And Lord knows we don't want to see our loved ones leave here. I was telling somebody the other day, I've buried 10 church mothers since I've been pastoring. 10 years. I have, amen, celebrated 10 years mothers of this church and every time we lose one it hurts me again and again it lets me know that we're moving from here we are moving from here and I don't want the Lord to catch me with my work on that thank you sister Perry as missionary Brian said I must work while it is day what do you mean by that? Why you got your health and strength? Yeah. Why you living? Why you able? Yeah. I got to work yeah. in the vineyard yeah. because the sun is going down. Yeah. I must offer you an opportunity today. I must offer you an opportunity today for those of you that are not saved. don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sin. Today is the day. Today is the day. If you know that you're not saved to my young people, amen, if you have not professed Christ, amen, as your Lord and Savior, I want you all to start making your way to this altar right now. Amen. Not just to my young people, amen, but I am appealing 
to everybody that is under the sound of my voice, amen, middle age and seniors as well. If you are not saved, you need to be saved today. When love flows because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. 